time, left time, left time. Let's go. Okay. Bye. I'm going to take the scarf off. We'll fix this. I heard you leaving. You're off. You've made it in the big time. That's how it appears. I don't begrudge you. I saw it coming. You know, people lap up them atrocity stories. They read them all the time in them penny dreadfuls. Now you, you go and you give them a real factualized version. You even got the marks to prove it. You know, people that they're going to come up all out of their homes and come on down to them, them big halls just to see them marks. And tattoos. People strive on seeing freaks. Well, I'm glad you don't begrudge me. Why? Why would I? No reason. Just thought you wanted to write a book, a novel. You spoke about it, but I guess it was just a pipe dream, you know, <laughs> child fantasy. Nothing to be taken seriously. You know, I had a novel in mind. I was going to write about my adventures. Guess you just never had any, did you? I had some. Some things happened to me. Not much, though. Well, my face never got scarred. Did you wish you had? No. Why would I? Because maybe you like to be remarkable, but you're not. You look forward to things by decades. You're settled, stayed, and dreamless. I see it haunts you, how you can't compare to me, to Bess Johnson, the woman who survived five adventurous years in Indian captivity and return to write the book of the century and be adored by throgs all over the globe. You know, you don't fool me. I know how you did it. You pictured me. You stole from me. You stole me. I am the one who showed you how to walk and talk and fight and dream. I should have written that book. You know, people should be coming to, coming to meet me, clamoring to talk to me. I am the real thing. You, you are just a watered down, milk toast version. Them Indians captured the wrong woman. Is that a fact? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. Well, maybe it ain't too late. Maybe you still got a chance. Here, here, take this ink. Take this knife. In your face. Pour in the ink. Go ahead. Go be me. If you think you can. If you think you're so brave, I'll let you do it. You can go on my tour. Go on. Cut open your face. Go ahead. People will clamor to their feet for you. The old gloggers rejoice in rooting themselves. They do for prayer. They do to celebrate grief. So come on. Do it. Okay, I've always cared about you. Then cut it. Do it. Uh, cut uh, it to spread. Okay, I have spread. Then do it. Uh, cut it. Do uh, it. I am not cutting my face open for you. I do not want to be scarred. No. Because that would cost too much. You've gotten so measly now. You watch every egg, nickel, and biscuit. You know, we used to be friends. And I know we don't like each other now, but we used to. And we drifted apart, but 
gotta understand. You gotta understand that you owe me something. What do I owe you? Well, you you owe me fifty dollars. I mean, at least fifty dollars. I gave I gave you shoes when you had none, and clothes and food and lodging. I even. I even went out and I bought you that blue dress and those blue ribbons. Whatever your heart desired, I gave you. You know, maybe it never occurred to you. Or maybe you just never realized the fact But people don't like being beholding. They resent always needing and always owing. And pretty soon they begin to resent whoever it is they've been taken from. I do. I know that. You have resented me all along. Yeah. I believe I have. And I, I don't want you resenting me. So, let's just call it even. But I gotta have it. The $50, I, I, I need it to save my homestead. That's they're, they're gonna throw me out. You can't do this to me. Honey, I ripped the wings off an angel if God helped me fly. <laughs>